Whew. Okay. So we should be live now, guys. Hello, guys. This is What About Nintendo. Turn the music up for myself here. It's okay. A little quiet. Anyways, I'm back here for another coffee talk. Today we're going to be talking about a lot of different things, guys. A lot of different things, including some new Pokemon stuff that literally like just dropped that I just got in here. Uh, Call of Duty, possibly, probably not coming to the Switch. And Capcom announcing a Resident Evil 7 Cloud Edition for the Nintendo Switch. Hello, Tiny House Gamer. How are you doing today? Hope you guys are doing well. Hope everyone's doing good. Hey, Mason Jones. I feel like it's been a while. Maybe not. You changed your profile pics and saw I saw it, I think. How are you guys doing? Hope you guys are having a lovely morning. Me, for one, am having allergies, which I like never have allergies. It's weird. Hey, Josh here. How are you doing? But first off, let's get, let's get right on into it. First off, we're going to talk about some stuff I actually wanted to talk about last week but i didn't get to it it's been like a month or so okay yeah i thought it's been a while and yeah, we never got to this last week uh, so we're gonna talk about it now donkey kong country tropical freeze outsold the total lifetime sales for the wii u version in just two weeks i'm growing a mario beard mario doesn't have a beard he has a big old stash no beard but yeah, it took two weeks for it to outsell the Wii U version, which is absolutely incredible. So, on the Wii U, the game took 46 weeks, 46 weeks, to sell 1,118, what, excuse me, 118,774 copies. And it took two weeks for the Switch version to sell, to sell that as of... Uh, I think a week ago, it is at 122,719 copies. I should probably show you the chart here, actually. Let me grab that chart. So, if you're lucky here, this is the chart. So, you know, you got the Wii U version over here. Did pretty well off the bat, did pretty well off the bat, and then does nothing. Just like, bleh, boom. Right to here. Switch, and we're done. We're good. We're, we're fine. It literally started off almost selling. It started off selling more than this sold in what is that? One, two, three, four, five weeks or so. It sold more in the first week, in the first day, I think. Yeah, the first day. It sold more than the Wii version did in five weeks, like, and then it sold two weeks. It sold more than it sold in how many weeks are in a year? I'm not even sure, but that's. 46 weeks, and it, I don't think it really sold that much after that. Um, so, it's doing really good. I, for one, didn't get it on the Switch. I got it on the Wii U. I would get it on the Switch again if I had all the money in the universe, but I don't. Unfortunately, I be poor AF, so I cannot afford to buy that again. Uh, but, speaking of that, I guess I can talk about some personal news before we move on to the next topic. I got my door up! It's so much quieter in here. There's so much less background noise. It's amazing. I got this big saw, I mean like thick saw door, core door, like almost twice as thick as literally any of the doors in my house. Even my, it's thicker than my front door. And the thing is heavy. I mean, it's heavy. It's so heavy. I mean, me, it took me and my dad, like usually like the other door that was there that I was just leaning across before because it didn't fit in the door frame. I literally just, Picked that up and just hip, walked away with it, and it was a solid core door. This one, me and my dad were like pulling this door away. So I mean, it's heavy, and so yeah, it's pretty quiet in here nowadays. Uh, but not completely quiet. It's still some background noise. So I'm gonna buy some more some soundproofing stuff, buy some weather stripping, go around the cracks. Hey, Robier Two, how you doing? Hey, Psych, how you doing? I'll uh, read your comment just a second once I'm done talking about this. So. Weather strip around the cracks, and then put up some sound blockers and acoustical foam. Acoustical foam to, not to sound block, just to kind of turn the sound waves into smaller sound waves so it's easier to soundproof, and then a sound blocker, and then it would be quiet as, like, you know, anybody else. It'd be, like, nobody's home kind of quiet. It's going to be amazing. 
That smexy beard. It's not that sexy. It's it's lame. Look at that. It's like I'm trying to. It's weird moving in the camera. Like it's like no hair grows here. It's weird. Let's see. Good morning. You decided to get arms yesterday. Nice. Nice. You have arms since you were born. Nice. That's hilarious. Funny joke? But that's fu that's hilarious. Anyways, let's move on to the next topic. And that is also another topic from last week. And this will, after this topic, this is the last topic from last week that we didn't get to. And that is, let me drink some coffee here. Probably help me with my freaking allergies. So this one is more Star Fox news. So more Star Fox Grand Prix rumors have come out. We may, may be true, it may not. We don't even know if Star Fox Grand Prix is a thing. We don't. We don't know if it's actually real. I think it's gonna be real, but we don't know. So more information has come out about it. This is from Liam Robertson. Who is uh, a fairly, 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 very fairly, I don't know. He's a credible source, pretty much, most of the time. So, I mean, he's been right a lot in the past. He seems to have insider information. Uh, this is, so this guy's pretty legit. But still take with a grain of salt. Go get your salt mines ready, guys. Uh, and let's dive on into this. So, the game is not like F-Zero. At least, not completely. He's seen a more complete version of the logo. The game is based on the R-Wing, which differentiates it a lot from F-Zero. He was told the title Star Fox Grand Prix was a tentative title, which means it could change. The game is a mixture between classic Star Fox and racing. You shoot enemies to propel forward and get combos, and you can shoot other players too. Each Grand Prix is three tracks with a boss fight, where the boss comes onto the track. It has a big hub area where you can interact with Star Fox characters. You pick up new missions at the hub and there's story content to go through. The game looks really, really good in motion. He also heard Retro was considering adding cameos like Donkey Kong. He also heard it was a 2019 game, but you wouldn't be surprised if it was a 2018 game. So a lot of information, oh my gosh, voice crack, a lot of information to go over here guys. But I did see there were some comments, so let me read them first. Tea would probably be better for my allergies. Yeah, but I don't, I don't, I didn't make tea. This is not tea talk. This is coffee talk. Is my throat a little sore? No, it's not, actually. I just have stuffiness. It's just stuffy. I, I, my allergies never are bad. They're just a slight hindrance. That's, uh, my allergies, I never get, like, painful, usually. It's just, like, slightly hindering my speech on the worst day to ever do that. Because I have like three live streams a day. I have coffee talk, another live stream, gaming live stream, and the podcast. And I might do a video today if I have time. So it's like, this is the worst day ever to have allergies. But you know, whatever. Yeah, there's a lot of interesting information here, guys. Um, I'm a little bit cautious about the fact that you shoot enemies to move forward. Like, I feel that going one of two ways. Either you can get good at the game and you can get a lot of sweet combos and you can be moving fast or you're just going to keep missing and you're just not going to go anywhere or there's just going to it's just going to be a slow game. Uh, but you know, I think if they sh if you shoot enough enemies, you get momentum, it's it could be a very fast game, but this is definitely very different from F0. Of course, we heard F it was a mix between F0 um Diddy Kong Racing and Classic Star Fox, and this definitely seems to lean more on the Classic Star Fox and Diddy Kong Racing elements. I guess since it's a futuristic space shooter, or space racer, you could say it's kind of similar, similar to F-Zero in that way. Excuse me, but it seems very different in a way. So, for all those people like F-Zero's dead because Star Fox, probably not. If this is true, like, this is a very different, this is not even close to F-Zero, so... I do like the idea that a Grand Prix is three tracks and then a boss fight. 
I think that's great. A big hub area where you can interact with Star Fox characters is amazing. The fact that you actually pick up missions at the hub and there's story to go through is awesome. Uh, shooting, obviously, is something I wanted to be in the game, so I'm glad that's there. Interesting that it's used to propel you forward. I'm not sure, how sure that how that works, as I was saying. But I also heard, uh, this is not the only source that said the game is absolutely stunning. I've heard the game is just absolutely just mind-blowingly beautiful, so I hope that's true as well, because them graphics got to be good. Did I hear about the Pokemon rumors today? I did. We will be talking about that. That is... Uh, actually the next topic, if you guys are ready to move on. Seems a lot of you guys want to hear about Pokemon or something, so. Yeah, I think Star Fox Grand Prix has the chance to be really, really good. The only thing that worries me is that shooting to propel forward, if they don't do it right, could be make the game very slow and tedious, and I just, as long as they do it right, I think it'll be fine, but... Also, he could be mistaken on it. He could have misinterpreted information. Maybe you can shoot enemies to get a boost instead of shooting enemies to, you know, actually move. Uh, you know, I'm not really sure. You can shoot other players too, which is interesting. So you can actually shoot other players and slow them down, I guess. That's an interesting mechanic. I like that. I wonder if you can actually destroy other people's stuff and have to make them, like, respawn and go slow or something. I'm not really sure how that works, but that sounds good. Anyways, let's move on to the next topic, because you guys are wanting to hear about Pokemon. We got more information on that Pokemon. We got more of that Pokemon info. So, somebody who leaked, leaked, I'm, 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 I'm using quotes here. You can't see it, but I'm using quotes. Leaked uh, some information about... That are apparently legitimate information. We don't know, but for, a lot of people are saying that they've heard the same thing. And the same person who said all this stuff about Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Pokemon Let's Go Eevee are saying that the game will primarily focus on games uh, only or Pokemon only available in Kanto. So. What they're saying is, like Go's first release, only Kanto Pokemon. Excuse me, I'm all stuffy. Ahem. <clears throat> like Go's first release, only Kanto Pokemon will be available in Let's Go. So, oh my gosh, so so stuffy. I hate it, man. It's so bad. So, this, I've heard a lot of people like really, really getting upset about this. I don't think that this is completely true, and I really don't. Uh, I think they might focus on the original 151, which I think is fine, but I think like there were Alolan forms of different Pokemon from Kanto and Alola, I think there will be Kanto forms of different Pokemon, Alola Pokemon, Johto Pokemon, all these kind of things I think could be in the game. Will they primarily focus on Kanto? Probably. I mean, you're going back to Kanto. We're only going to focus mostly on those Pokemon. But I do think there will be regional variants in this game. I do not think this guy is completely correct. I mean, it just doesn't make sense for them to only use the 151 original. I understand it worked for Pokemon Go because people recognize them. But even in Pokemon Go, they rolled out new Pokemon. They didn't just stick with 151 Pokemon because they realized that's not enough. That's You can't just stick with 151 Pokemon and be good. I think the Pokemon company already realized that. They've already changed that with Go. So maybe they're focusing on the Kanto Pokemon, but I, I'm clearing up a little bit here. But you'll be able to get Pokemon variants from other regions. I just think that's just what they're going to do. I don't see them coming out and be like, oh yeah, by the way, can't catch any other Pokemon, but the original 151. I, I don't say that. Let's see. You don't think it's true either? Yeah, Josh, I don't think it's completely true. I think it's partially correct. I just don't think it's completely true. You mean crossing every member slash bone possible so that Metroid Prime 4 comes out this E3? It better come out. Are you like this? You're like, eh, eh. That's how you are right now. 
I had to do a visual demonstration. Uh, just so people can understand fully. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't think it's completely true. I think it's partially true. 100% you right now? Nice, nice, nice. Oh, also, I'm going to be buying more lighting because this side of my face feels very lonely and shadowed. It's like I'm two-faced. I'm like the bright side and the dark side. So, definitely going to get that fixed. When am I going to stream after this stream? I'm not sure. Uh, I'll let you guys know on Discord and Twitter. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, on to the next topic, though, because we're saying, actually, we... Hey, you know, we'll skip this topic. It's not that important. I don't really care. <laughs> and this one, probably... You know, let's go to the final three topics. You know what? Let's go to the final three topics. I do this sometimes. There's just too much information to fit, and the time's off, so I just skip it. It's okay. It wasn't that all. It wasn't all that interesting. It was kind of kind of filler stuff. So we'll just move on. This one I wanted to talk about, and that is that Best Buy Gamers Club Unlocked is ending. It's ending, people. Many of you may not even know what this is. Many of you may not care. But for me, I actually have this, and they're ending it. So. If you do not know what the Best Buy Gamer Club Unlocked is, it was like by far, in my opinion, the best gaming subscription, like, you know, uh, membership kind of thing where you get money off of games ever. You got literally 20% off every new release for two years for, t I think it was $30. It was twenty or thirty dollars. I don't remember exactly. It was twenty or thirty dollars. I literally almost paid. I almost saved the entirety of the subscription cost on my first purchase of a hundred dollar. Of it was a special edition, so it was a hundred dollars games. Uh, literally, if I go buy any other game right now at Best Buy, I will have saved two dollars more than I spent, and I just got this like a couple months ago. <coughs> Excuse me. Literally, if you buy, I think two, if you buy 120, 180 dollars worth of games, you've already saved because you get 12 dollars off literally every game. It was 30 dollars for two years. So if you buy three games, three 60 dollar games, in two years, you've already saved money, more money than it cost more money than it costs not 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 you've broken even you save more money than it costs by three games in two years not only do you get 20 percent off brand new games you also get 10 percent off every used game as well so this was like the subscription of all subscriptions i kind of understand why they're getting rid of it because how the heck can they even afford to do this like i don't know like i don't know how they even afforded to do it for how long they were because man this was such a good deal like they had to have been losing money off of it because people are buying so many games like it's insane so they're ending this though they're ending it uh but there is a big big campaign to get it back there's a big big bang pain campaign to get it back but if you already have the membership you will not be canceled uh, you just can't renew it after two years so I'm gonna get it for a little bit longer and then you know another another two years or so another year and a half or so and then it'll be gone but I shall use it to its full extent in that time <sighs> unfortunately it's going away hopefully they bring it back but you know whatever it's unfortunate it's very unfortunate but let's move on to the next topic because that one's not all that important. I just wanted to mention that because I'm sad. I'm sad, man. Oh, my Best Buy Gamers Club unlocked, but it's going away. I need to save money. How dare. But we shall move on to the next topic. That is about Blops 4 or Black Ops 4 as it is typically called. But a lot of people call it Blops and I thought that was hilarious. So I call it that too. So, Treyarch, the developers of Call of Duty Black Ops 4, said that they have no plans to bring Blops 4 <laughs> to the Nintendo Switch. So, we had a full reveal for Black Ops 4. There's no 
campaign, just like rumored. There is a battle royale mode. There's zombies and there's normal mode, but there's no campaign, and it's not coming to the Nintendo Switch. It is not coming to the Nintendo Switch. So, am I upset? Am I mad? Am I raging that Black Ops 4 is not coming to the Nintendo Switch? And when I did this, I literally almost spilled my coffee all over my desk, but I do not care because it's okay. I didn't spill it. Am I raging? N no. I'm not raging. First off, I don't care about Call of Duty. Like, I don't, like, it's, I don't like it that much. Like, it's not, it's not that good. At least, not the Black, I don't really like the Black Ops series. Like, I literally, my brothers went out and bought Black Ops 3, like, two days ago. And I played it with them on the Xbox One in split screen. And I was like, the fuck is this shit? Literally, that was my reaction. The fuck is this shit? Because if you have played that game on the Xbox One, in in split square split split, split screen multiplayer uh, in the story mode you will know it runs at the very steady frame rate of like 15 frames per second at like less than 720p it is so bad nigh on unplayable bad literally the most unoptimized game i'd ever seen and that's on the Xbox One people not even the Nintendo Switch. Like, the Nintendo Switch, you try to put that game, I'm pretty sure it would just explode. Like, you, you might get 10 frames per second at 720p. Split screen. So, it's just not worth it, man. It's just not worth it, man. I don't get this. They keep this garbage off my Switch. I don't even care. At this point, because I know what will happen. I mean, it did come to the Switch. I know they wouldn't take the time to optimize it. I know they wouldn't take time to draw the most power that they can out of the Switch. I know all they're gonna do is be like, oh, just slap it on there, 10 frames, strike, we're good. Just like they do with the Xbox One version. If they don't treat the versions they're already putting it out on that are more powerful, if they don't treat those right and get those to run well, there's no way they're gonna take extra time to make sure it runs well on the Switch. They're just not gonna do, they don't, they already don't do that with their current platforms. It runs like shit, absolute shit on their platform, on their, all their current platforms. Why the hell? Do I want them to put this on the Nintendo Switch? What? Why? Why? Why, do, why would I want that? I, I don't. Because I don't care enough. <laughs> I do not care to go play this game at like 10 frames per second on my Switch. Because even though the Switch could probably handle it, even though the Xbox One and the PS4 could probably handle it, they don't care. They do not optimize this game for their consoles. They just don't. They run action. So, yeah, I, I just don't want to play it. You just imagine me having a country accent during this rant? I mean, it would make sense if I had a country accent considering I live in Houston, Texas, and we had the rodeo over her. We just be wrangling up some horses all day long. I feel like that's more of a uh, Tennessee accent. I feel like most people down here in Texas... Have like a slight accent, most of them. I don't really have that much. Maybe I do. Maybe I don't realize I have an accent. Maybe you guys can point it out to me. Maybe I do have some of an accent. But, I mean, the most we do is say y'all. I mean, it's just not... We don't have that much of an accent. So, it's, it's not like we all be talking like this or nothing. So... But, like, that's my, like female Tennessee accent. That's not even... I can't even do, like, a male <laughs> southern accent. <laughs> Where does everyone you know live in Texas? Because Texas is the best. I mean, like, almost 5 million people live in Houston alone. So, I mean, that's a lot of people. Houston, Texas is the best. Except the weather here is not good right now. It's, it's, it's shit right now. So. But, you don't have to worry about shoveling the snow, that's for sure. Hmm. <sighs> Do I get pickles at movie theaters? No, that's disgusting. What's wrong with you? Pickles, first off, are gross. 
I don't want pickles when I'm eating, watching a movie. And even if I like pickles, I wouldn't want that because you get pickle juice all over your hands and you can't wash your hands. No. And you eat popcorn at movies. Actually, I don't even eat anything at movies. I don't eat food at movies and I don't drink soda at movies because I don't have to go to the bathroom for five seconds and while I'm trying to watch this movie. And I don't want to do that. Can I, can I do an Italian accent? Uh, uh, let me go uh, make some pizza for my mama. I'm gonna make my mama proud. I'm gonna go to make my spaghetti in the Alfredo. I think that was okay. It was a decent Italian accent. But enough Italian. Italian accents aside, let's move on to the last topic. Uh, and that is that in Japan, Resident Evil 7 Cloud Edition or Cloud Version has been announced for the Nintendo Switch. So, back when Capcom was saying they wanted to get Resident Evil 7 on the Switch, we thought, you know, they wanted to get it running on the Switch. They wanted to, uh, you know, port it to the Switch so we could play it on the go and, you know, play it at home and do all this stuff. But uh, it's not what they meant, apparently. Apparently what they meant is that they wanted to stream it to our Nintendo Switches. And... This is both a good thing and a bad thing. There are drawbacks and there are highlights here. And it all depends on how this goes. So, first off, the entire game will be running through the cloud. The Nintendo eShop, or the <laughs> eShop, Nintendo Switch itself will not be running the game at all. It'll be streamed from a PC. There's gonna be a big hub of PCs that are running the game several times and they're all streaming it to tons and tons of Switches. The game will look as good as the PS4 version or better. That's that's pretty much how it's good. It's gonna look it's good as the PS4 version or better, pretty much. It should. Assuming they do this right and they don't cheap out on it. It should look as good as the PS4 version or better. It should run at a very stable frame rate. Uh, it should run 1080p 60 FPS um, with all the textures and lighting and everything enabled, which you couldn't do if they actually ported to the Switch. It'd probably be like 720p, 30 FPS with, you know, some lower textures, and lower resolution textures and less lighting and stuff like that. So we're getting the full fat, as people like to say these days, experience here with the graphics. Oh, you get all the DLC, all the DLC for free uh, included in this. Uh, and you buy the game or you rent the game apparently the game can be played for free up to 15 minutes afterwards You need to pay $20 and you can play the game for the next 180 days So you never actually own the game you pay essentially to rent the game for 180 days Which is not a bad price for all the DLC the full game 20 bucks for 180 days It's not bad and you get a lot more graphical experience, uh, you know you know, way way better graphics than the switch would be able to run which is at, you know at first that sounds pretty dang good that's like it's amazing but and then you realize if you have a bad e internet connection it's not going to run very well on your switch or at least there's going to be input lag if you want to play portably you can't unless you have an, e an internet connection when you're portable you just can't play portably pretty much this is going to be only on the tv and only for people with good internet connections and right now it's only in japan they may announce it for the west as well but the servers are likely going to be in japan only for at least a limited amount of time so up until we get a western release it probably will have input lag if you're playing in the west overall though resident evil 7 isn't a game that you something like a super fast paced racing game or some kind of super super fast paced shooter it's it's a pretty slow game most of the time there are shooting segments obviously but you don't need to be like ridiculous fast or anything so it's not that bad if it has input lag but i hope it has minimal input lag anyways like i'd rather them have a version of the game that you can actually buy and have running on your switch if you want to play portably but for me this is actually a better thing if i was going to play this on nintendo switch i probably want to probably just, if i want to play resident evil 7 i'll buy it on my pc but for people who don't have that option who just want to play the game at their home be fully immersed in the horror experience which i mean horror on the go isn't really who wants to play horror on the go i mean if you're gonna play horror you want to be scared so you want to be like at your desk like the lights off and stuff you don't be like on a train getting scared that'd be weird um so in that way i kind of get it but this is for people who don't have a ps4 and xbox one they only have the switch they don't have a pc at least not a good one 
uh, and they want to play Resident Evil 7 on their on their TV. I, I mean, for those people, it's great. It's just I don't want this to be a thing for most games because I want games to be able to take on the go. I mean, it's this Nintendo Switch. You should be able to take games on the go. You shouldn't have to, like, only have to be on the internet. It shouldn't be only available for people who have good internet connections. And, you know, it's just... Uh, there are good points and bad points here. I think for this game... I don't know. I feel like... I guess it's a much better horror experience if you have all the lighting and stuff. You just need that kind of lighting. You need that 60 FPS for, you know, the right horror experience. So I think some games like this who really, really depend on just the graphics to be more immersive may have to be played through the cloud or at least enhanced by the cloud. But I'm hoping that Nintendo will release a new version of the Switch or an upgraded dock or something so that we can get these games running on Nintendo Switch better because games that need more atmosphere i can understand why they're doing this i mean resident evil 7 these kind of horror games you want a deeper atmosphere because it's just the game is built around that it makes sense uh that you need you know the more you know enemies on s screen you need the amount of bugs and different gross things everywhere and you need the lighting and you need the resolution of the textures so it's just more immersive so i understand in a way it's just kind of upsetting that you can't play a nintendo switch game on the go what are you guys saying? Let's see. I'm funny. Thanks. Why stream it? Ha! Ah, no. Why streaming? I know. Pizza, pizza. <laughs> Remember Warrior Wears Mama's Pizza? I don't. An upgraded dock would be good. Yeah, I, I want a 4K dock, Nintendo, and I want a Switch XL that's more powerful, so I can run third-party games at like you know 6 FPS. This game always could run on the Switch. I think if they did release a new version of the Switch actual handheld unit that was more powerful third party games could still be on it they might be a low resolution and they might not have all the bells and whistles but you could still run it on it that way people are alienated you can still play every game on the older switch but having the option to play these games in your 1080p 60 fps you know, or 720p 60 fps on the go with all the lighting and bells and whistles and stuff like is would be amazing and i'd buy a whole nother switch for that i would I go out and I pay another three, four hundred dollars, whatever it costs. I guess it would be three hundred, uh, you know, to buy a whole nother switch that's more powerful, handheld, and handheld and docked. And I'd pay a, a two hundred dollars to get a four K dock. I would. I just would. I want these games. I want them to look better. I want Mario Odyssey in full 1080p or 1440p, 60 FPS. You know, with anti-aliasing. I want Zelda Breath of the Wild at a full. You know. 1080p to 1440p, you know, as stable 30 FPS on my Nintendo Switch, which I think it can. I think the problem with Breath of the Wild, as I've mentioned this several times before, is that it just wasn't optimized very well. So, um, but you know, the extra horsepower, you don't really have to optimize it, you just have to release a patch. Just boop, here you go. You know, I want to play Cinematic Chronicles 2 at some above 720p with frame drops at 30 FPS. So, you know, I, I want to play these games at 1440p or 4K. Because I have a TV capable of 1440p, and I want to play those. So I'd pay money for that. i pay a lot of money for that. So, because I think these games are so beautiful already, they deserve to have... Nintendo games just deserve to look be better. I'd pay... You know, I want HDR on my Nintendo games, man. I want Mario Odyssey with HDR. I want Zelda Breath of the Wild with HDR. I want these games at 1440p and 4K. Like... It's just what I want. I think it'd look amazing. And Nintendo's games deserve, they deserve to be running better than they are. And part of it's because they're not optimized. Some of the older ones, like Breath of the Wild, obviously that, that game has been developed for so long, they didn't have time to fully optimize it for the Nintendo Switch. That's pretty obvious with all the patches they've been coming out that literally change nothing about the game, and yet it runs a million times better. They've been optimizing it as they go, so... But if they could brute force that through a 4K dock or 1440p dock, that'd be amazing. Uh, but yeah, I don't know how many of you guys would pay like two, three hundred dollars for an upgraded dock that plays at 1440p, you know, and just anti-aliasing and HDR and stuff like that. How many of you guys would actually pay for that? And how much are you willing to pay? Yeah, yeah. All right. So I got two questions. Put yes or no if you would pay for it. If you put yes, put how much you think it should cost for a 1440p to 4k dock 
So Mason Jones, you would do that, but how much do you think you would cost? It would it should cost. Tanos Gamer, you said you might get it as well. So how much do you think it should cost? Because I'm thinking if it goes to 1440p, probably 150 to 200 dollars. But for one that goes all the way to full fledged 4K, I think it would have to be like 300 bucks. So I think they would do a 1440p one at 150 to 200 dollars. That just makes sense, in my opinion. Um, so I think they could do that 2019, as early as 2019. Holiday, and then maybe holiday 2019, we could see a 4K doc. I don't think it's gonna be this year. If it is this year, boy, I'm gonna get hyped because I want to play the expansion for Zimmer Chronicles 2 in 1440p. I think that would be absolutely amazing uh, because that game is so beautiful. It's just so blurry. <laughs> The textures are so good. The lighting is amazing. The character models are exquisite. That game just is so blurry. It is. That game was also rushed because the development team was working on Breath of the Wild. Freaking Breath of the Wild, man. Taking all the development resources away from, you know, my, my bro. It's even played, even though I love Breath of the Wild, but yeah. Lacey James, you said you would, but no more than $300. Mason Jones says it should be 150 to 200 Yeah. That's so I think you guys are in agreement with me. Uh, 150 to 200, no more than 300 dollars. Uh, I think it's gonna be 150 to 200, and I think it's gonna come out in 2019. I hope it comes out this year, but I don't think it will. I think it's a little too early for them to release hardware revisions because I think uh, you, you kind of got to get the switch out. People need a little more time to get kind of acquainted with what it is, and then you can start releasing added add-ons and additions and stuff like that. And they need to market this properly. They need to make it. If it is, a, I think what they'll do, I don't think they'll go full 4K because that'd be expensive. Like, I don't even know if it's possible uh, in just that small dock. I don't know if it's possible to upgrade it all the way to 4K. I just don't know if that's possible. As we see, the Xbox One X does 4K, but that's 500 bucks. Even the PS4 Pro, which is 400, doesn't do real 4K. It does upscale from 1440p to 4K or slightly above 1440p to 4K. So that doesn't even do full 4K. And that's $400. So I definitely think, I think they're gonna market this as the 2K machine or the Quad H, the Quad HD, which sounds a lot like 4K. And you think, oh, Quad HD, you know, that's four times HD, that's 4K, right? No, because HD is not 1080p. Full HD is 1080p. Normal HD is 720p and Quad HD is four times the display of 720 twice 1080p so 2k or quad hd i think is how they're gonna they're gonna market that and i think it will sell really i think if they sell this quad hd people are gonna get they're gonna think it's 4k and they're gonna buy it <laughs> they'll be like oh shiny quad hd so i think that's probably how they'll market it or 2k or something like that so i think it's a good 150 200 dollars i want it please nintendo just let me give you my money so i can have a better looking game because even though most games on the Switch are drop dead gorgeous, like they could look better. And there are some games like Xenoblade Chronicles 2 where you're just like, uh, mm, like uh, that doesn't look that great. It's like if you could just bump the resolution on that game, it would look exquisite. So yeah. Hey, no name, how are you doing? You actually just came in as I was ending in. I was just doing a bonus sort of bonus topic. Oh wait, did we talk about Pokemon? Oh, we talked about Pokemon. Never mind, never mind. We did talk about that. Uh, so we're in I just was talking about a little extra topic that we got off a little side topic little bunny Bunny trail topic that we were talking about. We actually just just pretty much just finished talking about it But thank you for coming anyways So anyways guys, that'll be all for this episode if you like this episode Make sure to like this video and share it with your friends so more people can get in on the discussion Every morning 11 a.m. Central Standard Time or so we start at 1130 today uh, so we can get in on that discussion, have more people here live to talk about all this Nintendo news. And if you're not subscribed, make sure to hit that subscribe button because I do coffee talk Monday through Friday, as I said, 11 a.m. Central Standard Time. I do gaming live streams Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, and I do videos Monday through Saturday, somewhere in between there when I have time. I actually, with the new soundproofing, I'm gonna get all of a lot more time to record videos, so I'll be sticking to that Monday through Saturday uh, much better than I have been. The only reason I haven't been lately is because every time I go to record a video, it's freaking loud as hell in my house. So I can only record in like a two to three hour time zone. It's not very convenient. Uh, but anyways, guys, that'll be all.
And I'll thank you all for watching. And I'll see all you awesome people later on What About Nintendo. Bye!